Hey everyone, Tino up Noah Barfield here. Welcome to Writer's Corner. Alright, so it's getting a little colder outside where I am in Utah, which is the opposite of what I should be doing, and it oddly coincides with my grandparents visiting. Make of that what you will. But my entire job is sitting inside all day, so it's not like it's really affecting me. But the colder weather has allowed me to dress up a little bit more, keeping with the theme of this video, which I'll get to later. It has allowed me to wear long sleeves, and also has given me the chance to tie the Vidalia knot, which I have not done before, but I think it turned out pretty well, with my Darth Vader tie, which you can see here. And speaking of dress up, I've had an awesome time recently. I went to an anime con and met lots of really cool, awesome people. My Winden costume was a big hit. Lots of people wanted to take pictures with me, and not just because I had a book in my hand this time. But I also met some really creative people, as nerds tend to be, and a lot of nerds were at AnimeCon. Imagine that! But meeting all of these talented young writers and artists, as well as booking speaking events and book signings, has really inspired me to do another video on being professional. Hence the tie and the long sleeves. But no, uh, didn't you already do a video on being professional? Yes, I did, and that's why this video is going to be really great, because the video I did last time was over a year ago, and it covered reasons why you'd want to be professional, as well as some pros and cons of it, and also a few tips at the end, but what I want to do in this video is give you helpful tips that will lead to a greater sense of professionalism while you're a team writer. So this is going to be a more informative video. Prepare yourself. You can watch it on double speed if you want. So my first tip is to dress professionally. Exhibit A. Now, I know in the past I've talked about one of the perks of being a writer is that you get to stay home, in your bed, not deal with people, and stay in your pajamas. And sometimes you get to do that. Sometimes if you're sick, or if you really, really have been pushing yourself, it can be great to do that. And I'm not talking that you have to dress in suits or ties or everything every day, but getting dressed and out of your PJs can actually help. Now you might be thinking to yourself, I literally cannot think of one good thing that comes from me changing out of my pajamas. And believe me, I understand you on that. But getting out of those PJs can actually give you a pretty great sense of purpose or a full start to your day. Oftentimes, whenever I don't change out of my PJs, either because I'm really tired or I've been pushing myself a lot, I don't feel like my day ever really fully starts. But more than that, it can also raise your self-esteem. Whenever you're dressing differently, whenever you can actually go out of the house and not be ashamed of the food stains on the plain white shirt that you've been wearing for the past three days? It can actually be really beneficial for you. I don't know why, but wearing something besides Batman onesie might be a great confidence booster. I mean, not that I'm complaining if any of you want to get me Batman onesie, I mean, I totally wear that. But <clears throat> moving on to tip number two, have a designated writing area. But Noah, I may not have an internet in my house, or I'm constantly moving, or I can't settle down in one particular place. Travel full time, remember? I get it. I get it. If you don't have internet at your residence or you're living with loud people, it can be difficult. But having a designated area where you write and work can be really helpful. For one, it makes you feel like you're actually going to a job. And I know you may be thinking, why would that ever be a good thing? So yes, I understand writing is something that you love, it's your passion, and you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Coupled with food delivery services, you may never even have to leave. But writing is still technically your job. So having a table or desk that you can write at every day can put you in the proper mentality. Plus, getting the mindset of, this is the job that I have, this is what I do for a living, this is what I love, but this is what helps pays the bills, can actually lead to an increase in productivity because you're taking it more seriously. Now, I'm not saying you can't get up and move around. Please, go ahead and do that if you feel that's what you need. Many of my writer friends like to get up and be active whenever they're struggling with things like writer's work because for them to be physically moving helps their brain to move. But having a designated writing area to come back and work at after you've refreshed yourself will help you take yourself more seriously and view yourself in a more professional light. Tip number three, do something else besides write. Do something besides write? This doesn't make any sense. Calm down, let me explain. Many authors write either from research or personal experience. While research is amazing and incredibly beneficial, it does not compare to actually experiencing your thing. I'm not saying to chop off your hand so you can better relate to the character's experience that you're writing at this moment. Please don't do that. But what I am saying is maybe take classes that you're interested in or that may help your writing, besides writing classes. Pursue other interests. If you want writing to be your primary job, you may not want to have another one to gain extra experience in, so I leave that decision up to you. You should still, however, have other hobbies and interests that you want to pursue. 
Ever wonder what it was like to go fishing? Do it. Thought sculpting might be cool? Try it. Wanted to attend a multi-hour lecture debating the minutiae of constitutional law? Sure, I, I guess. Do you. The point is to be well-rounded, expand your horizons, and try something besides writing. Yes, writing is amazing. But if what you do is sit at a desk or a table all day, every day, doing nothing but writing in your Sunday best, you will quickly drive yourself insane. So having some great new experiences will lead to fuller stories and more realistic characters. It will also help your author brand. Which leads me to tip number four, have an author brand. What the crap is an author brand? Well, it's also called an author platform, if that helps. Many writers, especially young writers, overlook this. An author brand or platform is building up a reputation or buzz around you, the writer. This is especially helpful if you have multiple unrelated works or series, as this draws attention to you and you become more well-known. But how do I do this? I'm an introverted, antisocial writer, don't you know? If I wanted to deal with people, I wouldn't have food delivered to my door, and I wouldn't stay in my pajamas all day writing about death. Well, there are a few ways that you can help build your author platform even from the safety and comfort of your own home. One thing you can do is be more active in social media. This isn't a problem with most teens, but for those of us who are less socially inclined, this may seem a big challenge. Having to build up an online presence can seem pretty daunting, but work with small things and slowly build your way up. It may not be as challenging as you might think. You should also have your own website. If you're really serious about writing and want it to be your career, having your own website is a must. It can be a blog, you can post your videos on there, and it can be a storefront for the whole internet! Don't forget about any niches you might fill. Are you a homeschooler, belong to a particular religion, part of a band, group, or sports team? Use this! If you're already involved with a certain community, this is a group of people that you can relate to and talk to about your work. This is called networking. You should probably learn it. And speaking of learning things, take some marketing classes, learn the business side of this. I've talked about this before, and so do many other authors on YouTube, but I cannot stress it enough. Know your stuff. Learn how to market and promote yourself in social media, how to run ads and campaigns, and where and how to promote yourself offline. Learn the basics of economics and finance, as well as how the publishing industry works and what niche you want to be involved in, whether that's self-publishing, traditional, or co-publishing, or some other hybrid I can't even imagine. Learning the ins and outs of the publishing industry is incredibly helpful. Knowing how distribution works, the averages of royalties, pricing, costs, editing, all of that is invaluable. Basically, know your stuff. Lastly, seek to constantly improve your craft. This part, it's okay to kind of be OCD about. This should seem pretty obvious to you by now, but if it doesn't, don't feel bad. I just wanted to talk about it just to have all my bases covered. Beyond experiencing different things and growing as an individual, you should still try and get better at writing whenever you can. I've talked about these other things because A, they're important, and B, just because you write well does not mean you are a professional. This video is about viewing yourself professionally, though being good at writing definitely helps. No matter how good you are, though, and no matter how amazing you get at writing, you can't stop. You don't get to achieve writing mastery and then just call it quits. That's not really how it works. And at some point, you probably won't need to pay for things like writing classes or writing books, though buying those in the beginning may be really helpful. Though you should still probably step in on things like free classes, workshops, and seminars just to see if there's anything you might have missed. Writing is a constantly changing industry, despite what people may think. There are a whole host of new ideas and spins on those ideas being invented every second. So if you look hard enough, you'll always find something new to learn. But now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, it's time to brag about my book! My novel, Legendland, this fantastic piece of literature right here, is available on a plethora of places. You can find it on iTunes, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Smashwords, my publisher's website, or my website, www.arcdashstorm.com. And if you order off of there, I'll personally sign it for you, with my hands and everything. There's also a vast cornucopia of places for you to stalk me online. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads, Wattpad, and YouTube, obviously, where you can subscribe and comment below. And speaking of Wattpad, don't forget to check out Legendland Tales of the Nameless God, a free companion series to the original Legendland, available on Wattpad, updated every Friday with a constantly updating character list and weapon guide. Because I know my fight scenes can be confusing, I got you. And I hope that this video has been helpful, that you start to view yourself as a professional writer, that everyone likes all my works, and that you continue to enjoy.